Hi everyone, in this video we'll study how to compute the runtime of recursive algorithms using the master theorem. Now, let us assume that your recursive algorithm has this particular form. So you have a problem of size n, so the runtime of that algorithm will be tn, and you divide that into a subproblems each of size b. So each subproblem has a size b. So the runtime of each of those subproblems, which has size b, is t n, n over b. And you have a such problems. And then you have a function fn, which is kind of doing some of the extra work after this divide approach. Okay. So if you can express the runtime in this form, then the master theorem will come in handy. So, so there are a few constraints on A and B and Fn. So we'll just write that so that we understand it clearly. So when you have A and B in this form, A is greater than or equal to one and B is greater than one are constants. So these are constants. So, and fn, this function, is an asymptotically positive function. So it's an asymptotically positive function. Okay. So we can interpret this function or n by b, right? For example, n divided by b may not always be an integer. So we may interpret n by b as the ceiling or the floor as basically ceiling or the floor so that does not matter so if you can express the runtime of your recursive algorithm in this form you may use the master theorem and the master theorem is extremely helpful and there are three cases for the master theorem so that's what we are going to study in this video so in the first case so remember that tn equals a tn by b plus fn so we are going to to look at the form of fn so let me just write it here so if fn equal to o of n log a to base b minus epsilon if you can express fn in this form for some epsilon so you can find any epsilon that you want for some epsilon that is greater than zero then you will have the runtime tn to be of this form so as long as you can express fn in this form you can easily obtain the runtime like this so this is great so all that you have to do is make sure that fn follows this form. This is the first case. The next case occurs if fn equal to theta of n log a to base b. So the first case is fn is o of. The second case is fn is theta. Then t of n is theta n log a to base b times log n. So that is going to be the runtime of tn. So we first considered the O case, then we considered the theta case. The last case is going to be omega case. Now, if fn is equal to omega of n log a to base b plus epsilon, for some epsilon greater than zero. Now, in the third case, there is a sub case. It's just this condition is just not sufficient. You need some additional things to make sure that you can apply the third case. And there are recursive functions which will actually fall in that gap. So apart from this, you also have to ensure that, that f n by b is less than or equal to c fn for some constant 
So it has to be for some constant c less than 1 and all sufficiently large. So you will see that there are cases which will actually satisfy fn to have this form here. But the rest of the criteria, which we have still not finished, do not hold true. So you cannot apply master theorem. So that is, so when you're applying the case three, you have to be very careful that all these conditions are satisfied. That case Tn equal to theta Fn. Okay, so I'm just gonna pick this red color. So there are, in the first case, you will have Tn in this form. In the second case, you will have Tn to follow this form. Third case, you will have Tn to follow this form. Okay, so, so far, I, I hope that you're still with me here. And it's pretty tedious to understand all these different cases. So the best way to understand anything is to look at an example. So we'll look at examples for all the three cases. So if, let's look at case one. Okay, so, so I'm just going to write the ex case one here so that we can recollect what case one is. So case one, and we'll look at its example. So case one is, we have to express fn O of n log a to base b minus epsilon for some epsilon greater than zero, and then you'll have tn equals theta of n log a to base b. Okay, so let's look at an example. So let's assume that the tn that you're considering is this 9 tn by 3 plus n. So you have a problem for which the runtime comes out to be in this form. Then how can we solve this? So this follows the general form of the master theorem. Remember that the general form is this one. So it just follows the general form. Now we have to be careful that it falls into the first case. We already test that. So here a equals 9 b equals 3 and fn equals n. Now log or n log a to base b will essentially evaluate to n log 9 to base 3 which will be n square. So now we have to show, we need to show, to show for the first case to hold true that fn, which is n, is O of, it's O, not theta, I'm so sorry, it's O of n log a to base b minus epsilon. So this evaluates to O of n square minus epsilon. So Fn is O of n square minus epsilon. This will this will happen if, if you choose epsilon say equals 0 0.5. You can choose any a whole number of, of values of epsilon between 0 and 1. See if you choose epsilon, then you will have n equals O of 1.5 which is true which is absolutely true so the third the first case can be applied and tn if you look at the first case tn will be theta of log a to base b that will be so tn equals theta of n log 9 to base 3 equal to theta of n square okay so we can apply it so we applied case one here. So this is basically application of case one. Okay. So now that we have studied an example for case one, let's next study case two. So in case two, what we have is fn 
should be of the form we have to be able to express fn in the form n log a to base b theta of n log a to base b then we will have tn equals theta of n log a to base b log n okay this is what will happen so let's look at an example so we consider a case where tn can be expressed in this form so you have a problem where tn is 2n by 3 plus 1. This is how your tn is. So in this case, you have a equals 1, b equals 3 divided by 2, and fn equals 1, or basically theta of 1. 1 can be written as theta of 1. 1 is a constant. Now, if let's try to evaluate n log a to base b. So that is n log 1 to base 3 by 2. Now log 1 always evaluates to 0. That is n to the power of 0, which is equal to 1. Therefore, which is also we can be written as theta of 1. Therefore, what we have shown is fn is equal to theta of n log we just showed this just showed this and therefore the second case can be applied now by applying the second case we'll get tn equals to theta of n log a to base b log n this will this first term will evaluate to one so therefore we'll have theta of log So that is how in this problem we have studied case 2. So having so now we have only one more case to study. So we'll once again study it with an example. So first to do that, let's write down that case. It's a big case with a bunch of corner conditions. So case 3 is written like this. Fn case 3. Fn is omega n log a to base b plus epsilon and we have to show that for eps for epsilon greater than zero and we have to show that, that f a f n divided by b is less than or equal to C of Fn. We have to show this for some constant C less than one and all sufficiently large n. If this happens, then we have Tn equals theta of fn that's what will happen so let's try to look at this case with another example so let us consider that you have a recursive equation which is given this form that is tn equals 3 tn by 4 plus n log n so you have a problem and when you express the runtime you get this so let's try to solve this in this case a equals 3 b equals 4 and fn equals n log n so first thing let's evaluate log a to base b b is 4 a is 3 this will be equal to log 3 to base 4 and this we can write as O of 0 point um, not this sorry so that's what this will evaluate to and this can be written as O of n to the power 0 0.793 it's actually a little 
lesser than this it's basically n to the power 792 something something that is why i'm writing it as o of n to the power 793 now fn is n log n so note that fn is n log n now what we have to express is fn is lower bound of this thing here okay so to true that let's let's try so if you if you put if you evaluate omega n log by 4 plus epsilon then what we will get here is omega something like we can write at 0 0.8 plus epsilon now fn plus here so fn is n log n so if you choose epsilon approximately equal to 0 0.2 or less slightly less than that then we can definitely say that fn is omega of n log 3 to base 4 plus epsilon this is what we can show because fn is n log n and this is what omega log 3 to base 4 plus epsilon evaluates to okay now we have checked this condition so far now we have to check the remaining conditions okay so what do we have to check we have to look at this part that is a f n by b is less than or equal to c f n for some constant c less than one so and that should hold true for sufficiently large n okay so let's try to write that so that will be a f n by b can be written as 3 n by 4 log n by 4. Why is that? Because f n is this. So you can write it this form. Okay. Now we can say that this is less than 3 by 4 n log n we, what we did was we just took the 3 and 4 out there's an n log n by 4 is log n therefore it is that's why we put the less than equal to okay we can consider this 3 by 4 as c so this will become equal to c n log n which is basically c f n so we have found a c so for c equals 3 over 4 3 by 4 we have shown that this condition holds true for sufficiently large n therefore case 3 applies so we can apply case 3 and we will get tn equal to theta of n log n okay because case 3 says tn equals theta of fn and fn is n log n so that's why we get this so in this video we studied master theorem and looked at all the three cases and we studied them using three different examples I hope you like this video and if you like this video do subscribe to my channel thank you